Welcome to Midnight Mule FPL. I'm Midnight Mule and this is the video for Game Week 3 of the 5% series where if you follow these instructions hopefully you'll finish top 5% globally which means you'll do all right in your mini league. You may even win it. Now I've got to say something about chips. You have a wild card and you have a bench boost and it may be legitimate to play either of those this week. So the wild card, if you think your team just isn't doing very well at the moment and you want to make quite a few changes, then the wild card may well be worth playing, but that's possibly quite extreme. The other quite legitimate chip to play this week would be the bench boost. If, ignoring the goalkeepers, if the rest of your players look like they're going to be having a good week and you should be able to tell from what I'll be showing you whether they can have a good week, you may want to bench boost. Now, normally we have the bench boost later in the season when we have lots of double game weeks, but it's currently looking like this year we're going to have fewer double game weeks and smaller double game weeks than normal. So the bench boost is quite a good chip to get out the way if you're going to have a strong bench. But if any of your benched players have got a risk of not playing because they're an injury doubt, and we'll look at those two, then you don't want to be playing your bench boost. Initially, I was intending to play my bench boost game week three, but when Reese James got injured, that completely scuppered the plan, so I won't be doing that. If you're unsure about the wild card, then it's probably better to take a hit of three or four players rather than play the wild card. But if you need to change five or more players, then perhaps you should be playing your wild card. If you're unsure, don't play any chips. Let's have a look at the scores for game week two. So regarding the review for last week, how we did, I'm going to whiz through this because I figured people probably aren't too bothered about me reading out all the scores. So I'm assuming a 4-4-2 formation. So you would have had one of these goalkeepers. So you'd have got an average of 3.4 from your keeper. You could have got a 6. The worst was a 0. Regarding the first page of defenders, the best you could have got would have been 18. If you happen to have a Kanji and a Stupinan, the worst was 2 if you had Shaw and Chilwell, and the average was eight. Regarding the second page of defenders, the best you could have had was 15, the worst was two, the average was 8.4. Regarding the first page of midfielders, not particularly good here, you could have got 16, the worst was three, the average was eight. Regarding the second page of midfielders, if you were lucky enough to have Embremo and Mitoma, you would have got 28. And I am lucky enough to have both of those, so that was nice. The worst you would have got was 4, and the average was 10.8. For the forwards, they weren't very good at all. The best was 5, the worst was 1, average 2. The second page of forwards, the more cheap ones. Again, assuming one of these, you could have got 11, the worst was 0, if you'd had Jao Pedro. I had Pedro, so that wasn't so good for me. Average of 5.3. Now, the global average for game week 2 was 44 points. Whizzing through this like I just did and allowing for extra points for the captains, the worst score you could have got was 13 points. The average was 48.7 and the maximum was 104. Now there's a couple of people following this system that did get above the global average, but I'm also aware of a few that got below the global average, but everyone was around the global average. So it really wasn't a very good week, but that happens sometimes. Sometimes we're above the average, sometimes below, but... Generally, we should be all right to finish in the top 5%. So I'm not worried, not even slightly worried. So the goalkeepers going forward. This is what we're doing for game week three. So I'm going to take it a bit slower now. So regarding the goalkeepers, you will be having two of these seven keepers. They're all pretty much of a muchness. So you'll see Onana's predicted to get the best scores possibly this week at home to Nottingham Forest. However, he may not be the safest keeper, but we'll get to the order of what your benching order is later. There's not an awful lot in it, so unless you're playing a wild card this week, I recommend don't bother doing a goalkeeper transfer. Regarding your defenders, you may have Trent. He's currently flagged as being potentially injured. I have Trent. I'm probably going to move him on. Even though he's got some good fixtures coming up, 8 million is an awful lot of money to have in that position because I also have Salah. If I didn't have Salah, maybe I'd hold hold of Trent. But to have Salah and Trent is actually very expensive and quite limiting. I was fine to have them both for Bournemouth. Didn't really pay off. But now they're away to Newcastle and I'm probably going to move Trent on. That doesn't mean you have to. I'm just saying what I would do. 
Trippier's got two more potentially difficult fixtures in Liverpool and Brighton, but after that he has quite a nice fixture run coming up. Chilwell. Now I had a comment from somebody that the green wasn't very obvious, so I've made him a very obvious green now. So any cards that are green, I'm saying is a very good buy. If you've got them, definitely play them, definitely keep them. If you're wildcarding or doing a transfer, any that are green are players that you may want to think about getting in because they're definitely quite good. Luke Shaw's probably going to be good for this week at home to Nottingham Forest, but after that, he's a bit rubbish. So if you're wildcarding or just doing normal transfers, personally, I wouldn't be bringing Shaw in, but I wouldn't be dumping him either. James, I've marked as orange. We know he's going to be out for a few weeks. Now, if you have a strong bench, you may want to hold him, but he's probably going to go down in value yet. But he's probably not worth taking a minus four to move on if your other 11 players are OK. But definitely don't bring him in this week, obviously. Stones, he's out for a while. If you've got him, get rid of him. A stupid hand should be good for this week, but then Brighton do have some more difficult fixtures. If I was wild carding and I didn't have him, I probably would bring him in. I wouldn't dump a stupid hand. If I was just doing one sub this week, I probably wouldn't bring him in. Or just two subs, I probably wouldn't bring him in. Unless I had to release some cash. And then Akanji, he's perfectly okay. So for this coming week, you can see Chilwell's good and Shaw's good. Regarding the cheaper defenders in the system, Saliba's been playing, he's been doing all right at home to Fulham. Porro, we don't know if he's going to play or not. A bit frustrating. After a few more game weeks, we should have a good idea how often we expect Porro to play. But if we knew he was playing 90 minutes, he would definitely be worth having. And he's already gone down 0.1 million. So if I had either, either of those players, I certainly wouldn't be selling them. Gabriel, he's been disappointing because he's come on both games. We don't know if he's going to be playing 90 minutes or not like he was last season. So I'd be comfortable moving Gabriel on. But you don't have to. He may be all right. But he's a bit of a gamble holding him. Colwell, I've got him as a light yellow here. Home to Luton. Chelsea do have some nice fixtures coming up. He's only four and a half million. They're all good points. The downside of Colwell is he is taking up one of your Chelsea spots and there may be three other Chelsea players you'd rather have. Pinnock, only four and a half million. Brentford have been quite good. Perfectly happy with him. Bottman, cheap Newcastle defender. I wouldn't bring Bottman in this week because the next two fixtures are tough. Bayer, four million defender. He's okay. Bulldog's currently injured. I've got Bulldog. I won't be selling him because he's just going to sit on my bench anyway. But if you're doing transfers, you wouldn't want to bring him in unless he was your only option and you had to have two four million defenders, in which case you'd have Bulldog and Bayer. Regarding the midfielders, the more expensive midfielders, Salah is a very good player, but there are so many good midfielders, it's probably not worth, in fact, it's almost certainly not worth bringing in Salah. If you've got him, like I've got him, you may want to hold him or you may want to sell him and a cheap midfielder for two slightly better midfielders or him and one of your strikers, for example, for another striker midfielder. So it's fine to keep hold of Salah. It's fine to move him on if you want to strengthen your team somewhere else. Rashford, he's been rubbish as far as FPL's converts and the first couple of weeks, but he is at home to Forest. Now, some people are selling him this week because they've had enough. If I have had Rashford and I haven't got him, but if I did, I'd probably be tempted to keep him at least for Forest because he may get a goal and assist. You never know what's going to happen there. Saka's all right. He's not got penalties, but he's pretty solid. Gets lots of minutes. He's fine to keep. Fernandez. if I could only have one of Fernandez or Rashford, I'd probably go Fernandez. And if he does well against Forest, he'd be fine to keep as well. If I was wildcarding this week, I wouldn't bring in probably any of those four. But equally, I wouldn't be trying to get rid of any of those four if I wasn't wildcarding and it was just my squad as normal. Odegaard now looks like he's on penalties. He's certainly a good player. He's worth having. At home to Fulham this coming week. And then they've got another home game, all bit against Man United. But United have been awful so far. Then he's got Everton in the North London derby, Tottenham. Uh, Martinelli, I'd be less keen on him. So Odegaard's probably the best Arsenal midfielder here. Then possibly Martinelli because he's cheaper than Saka. But Martinelli's a minutes risk. He often doesn't get 90 minutes. Saka often does get 90 minutes. Foden is the only new player in this week. 
He's got some really nice fixtures coming up. So far, he has played pretty much all the game, maybe even all the games so far. If he keeps playing all the games, he's absolutely worth having. If I was wildcarding, I'd be bringing him in this week. If I didn't know what else to do, I was just doing transfers, I'd bring him in this week. And Madison, we don't know at time of recording how bad his injury is. If I had him, I'd probably move him on. Now, he, although he's at 7.6 at time of recording, if you sell him, you're only going to get 7.5. So you can't do a straight swap for him for Foden unless you have some money in the bank. But of all of these, Foden would be the best one to have, then probably Odegaard. Regarding the cheaper midfielders, Sterling, although he's done nothing so far regarding FPL returns, he has been very good on the pitch. Chelsea have some very nice fixtures coming up. If I was wildcarding and I could bring him in, I would do. But there are lots of good players, so it's going to be difficult to bring them all in. Embremo, he's very good. He's only 6.7. No reason to think he's not going to keep on getting points. I think he's worth getting in. Matoma, although he's very good and he's at home to West Ham, he may do something. He's then got Newcastle and Man United. So if I was wildcarding, I may not bring him in. But if I had Matoma at the moment, I would definitely be keeping him. As a, he's in our system, absolutely would not be bringing him in. But you don't need to dump him either unless you need to make space. For example, if you had Salah and Eze, you could certainly sell them for Sterling and Foden. That would be a good move. Gibbs White, we're now looking at the cheaper players who are there more or less just because you've got to have somebody, you can have someone cheaper. Casemiro, who is at home to Fulham, but he may get an assist or a goal, but otherwise he could just be a solid three points. And then Lerma, a five for Palace, and Nakamba, Luton, four and a half million. But those last two for sure would just be sitting on your bench. Regarding the forwards, Haaland's worth having. Highly recommend if you don't have Haaland, get him. If you're on a wild card, make sure you include Haaland. Watkins for 8 million. We now know he's not taking penalties. So I wouldn't be buying Watkins. I definitely wouldn't be buying Watkins now. But he's okay. If you've got him, he's okay to hold. But if you want to move him on, that's also okay. Wilson looks like Isaac's the main choice striker at the moment. So it may be Wilson is worth moving on. But I'm not saying you have to dump him. You can hold him if you've got him, but on a wild card, I would definitely not get Wilson. Darwin, he's a very good player, but he's not getting the minutes. So I would recommend if you've got Darwin, you sell him. Of course, me saying that now means he's going to get a hat-trick at Newcastle, but there are better strikers than Darwin, than Wilson, than Watkins. They're all worth moving on. Jackson, Chelsea, like Sterling, he's not done anything yet. But he's been close and he's got some very nice fixtures coming up. So if you're wildcarding, it's worth bringing him in. If you're not wildcarding, but you don't mind making a couple of transfers, Jackson's worth bringing in. Regarding the cheaper forwards, we have Solanke, six and a half. He's a right to hold. I wouldn't go out my way to get him in. Wissa looks like he's going to be very good. Uh, Brentford don't have Ivan Tony at the moment. Won't have him for a few months. He's only 6.1 million. So Wissa and Haaland up front, or Wissa, Haaland, Jackson, very nice combination if you can afford them. Gel Pedro, it looks like he may be a minute's risk. I've got him, but I'm probably going to sell him this week, probably, and get Wissa. Adibayo, okay, is just someone cheap for your bench now, as is Mubama. So don't worry about those. We, we have to have 15 players. It's okay to have a couple of cheap ones for the bench. So bench order, I'm going to show you the goalkeepers. Now the first keeper I show you that you've got, I'm suggesting you put on your bench. But with the bench order and the captains, these are just suggestions. If you'd rather do something else, you should absolutely do something else. So Turner, if I had him, I'd put him on my bench. If I didn't have him, but I had Pickford, I'd put Pickford on my bench. Now I know Everton have been poor so far, but they are at home to Wolves, and Wolves have been very poor attacking. So I would be okay having Pickford. I, those are my two keepers. I'll be playing Pickford and I'm fine with that. Next on the bench would be Johnson for Palace. Then it'd be Flecken for Brentford. I then got Onana left. Now on paper you'd have thought they'd have the easiest fixture at home to Forest, but United are a little bit all over the place at the moment. So hopefully you've only got one of Onana, Ramsdale and Edison anyway, in which case that's the keeper you'll be playing. 
But if I had two of those three, Onana is the last one that I'd be playing. And even though Edison's away and most of the other keepers are at home, Man City have been very good at not conceding shots on target. So he would be the first choice keeper to play of these. Regarding the rest of the players, if we get the bench right, the other 11 players sort themselves out. So the first player I show you that you've got, I suggest goes in position number three in the bench, the second one number two, the third one number one, but you can't have three defenders or three midfielders or three forwards on your bench. I hope that makes sense. And again, this is just a suggested order. And as always, there's going to be some good players in this list. So hopefully you can get three bench players out of the first maybe couple of rows here. So Stones is injured. If you, for whatever reason, don't get rid of him, he's on your bench. James, if you still got him, he's on your bench. And then Mubama, Bulldog, who's injured. Nakamba. Darwin, who's been awful, and away to Newcastle. Bayer, Pedro, Adibayo, Lerma, Botman. See, I'm squinting a bit. I should really be wearing glasses here. Gibbs White, Porro for Tottenham, Eze. Porro's down there because we don't know what his minutes are. He's the sort of player that you might want to play and choose somebody else on your bench. But we're naturally in the area now where we have to choose good players to go on the bench. Pinnock, Solanke, Trent, Wilson, Casemiro, Gabriel, Trippier, Watkins, Madison, Saliba, Wissa, Colwell, Akanji, Estupinan, Shaw, Mitoma, Mbuemo, Martinelli. Now, hopefully, you have none of that top row on the bench, and it'd be nice if you have none of the second row on your bench. But if you do, okay, that's just the way it goes. Regarding the captains, again, this is just a suggestion. I absolutely think Haaland should get the hat. He should get the old captain's hat. Most people would be captaining Haaland. And if you don't go with him, and he does better than whoever you choose, you're going to lose a lot of rank. But other choices would be Rashford, Odegaard, Foden and Jackson. So have one of these as your captain, if possible, and another one as your vice captain. If you don't have two of these, then for your vice captain, I'd suggest you choose any of your other players that had a little green square for the upcoming fixture. If you go back to the video, you'll see who those were. Personally, I wouldn't have Haaland and Foden as captain and as vice captain, because in theory, that game could get postponed like any game could. And if you have two captains from the same game or captain, vice captain, then you lose them both. So unless it's a double game week, I never choose captain and vice captain from the same team. And in case you were wondering about the picture, that's from the made up scene from the Battle of Trafalgar where the French and the English were playing football with each other. It was all going all right, but then it got a bit silly. I won't say who won the game, but it ended up in a lot of ships getting sunk. So there we have it. I do try hard to get these videos down in length, but because there's a fair bit to say, I struggle. Hopefully that made sense. If you do like this sort of thing, then likes are appreciated uh, as our sub subscriptions, of course, if you've not already subscribed. The most useful thing, though, is you actually watching that video the whole way through. Thanks for watching. Bye.